Hi everyone, it's Megan with Teach Me ABA and today we are discussing task list item C8 which discusses the validity and reliability of measurement procedures. So why does it matter? Uh, why does our data need to be accurate? Why does it need to be valid? Why does it need to be reliable? Um, well, because if it doesn't have these things, then we really can't decipher any meaning from it. Um, so let's discuss what validity is first. It has the word valid in it, right? So is it valid? Is it legitimate? Is it actually recording data on what we want data recorded on? Uh, so that's what validity means. And this is important because if we are collecting data on something that is not uh, what we actually want to collect data on, then our data is kind of meaningless, right? So next, uh, let's discuss the reliability of our data. So this means if there are two different people or if there's the same person collecting data on this behavior repeatedly over time, are they getting the same results? Is the measurement coming across the same? Uh, and so it's really important that our data is reliable because if we're seeing a lot of differences in the data between two different staff members, then we may need to come back to the drawing board and come up with a more clear definition of what we're actually measuring or uh, the dimension of behavior that we're actually measuring. So one example of validity of data collection or a non-example is if we have an individual who engages in tantrum behaviors that last an hour and a half long. Uh, we would not want to just take frequency data on that behavior because it wouldn't give us a valid measure of the behavior as it's occurring, but it also wouldn't give us an important measure and we wouldn't be able to see that behavior decrease in duration over time. So a more valid measure for a behavior that we would not like to see that's long in duration would be duration data, how long the behavior lasts. Likely when we see the duration decrease in that long behavior, we'll actually see an increase in frequency. So in order to make our measures valid, we would probably want to have both of those data collection procedures in place. So an example for reliability. Um, we want our data to look the same both within us collecting it across time and other people collecting it. So if you have one individual who says, collects data and says that this tantrum lasted an hour and a half and the other person only got 40 minutes or maybe they got two 40 minute tantrums, then this would show us that our data collection is not reliable. And a major cause for this is not clearly defining the onset and offset of behavior. So if I think that the onset of behavior is when he stomps his foot, but somebody else waits until they start screaming to collect data, then our data is not reliable and we need to go back to the drawing board so we can all be on the same page. Thank you guys for watching. Again, I'm Megan with Teach Me ABA, helping you guys study for the big exam. Good luck and don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Do 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 do